Hi, I'm Mike Hatton, and for over 20 years, I've been in a management role that saw me working with other managers from entry level up to and including the C-suite. The experience gained have positioned me to help many other leaders manage the stresses of not having enough time at work, not having enough family time, neglecting their health, and many other challenges magnified by the recent pandemic. I founded Human Cornerstone Facilitations, LLC in 2008. It was based on the need to help managers improve their productivity and that of their team. I would like to show you the roadmap to becoming a great leader by harnessing your team's strengths. Welcome to my show, Cornerstone, where the foundations of leadership begin. Hi, I'm Mike Hatton, and I'd like to welcome you to my show, Cornerstone, where the foundations of leadership begin. The show will be a conversation with leaders of all types, and it's intended to highlight uh, their journey, their pathway through the leadership course. And today I can't think of a better person uh, to start the conversation with than my good friend, Steve Arroyo. Steve has uh, a storied career, airline career, at the second largest airline in the world, uh, but he's not done there. He's uh, had a caring and a giving heart. He's worked with 501c3 organizations, and I'll let you tell him about that later. But right now, I'd just like to say, Steve, welcome to Cornerstone. Oh, thank you so much, Mike, for having me. I really appreciate it. So. You're welcome. And uh, Steve, maybe we can start off just by telling us a little bit about you. What uh, would the audience like to know about you? How did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Uh, you know, sure, just tell sure, us a little sure. bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a born and raised New Yorker. And I've wanted to fly airplanes since I was this big, started flying them when I was 13 and started my airline career at 21 and uh, recently retired after a 38-year uh, career with the airlines and uh, so happy to have been, had that opportunity and meet so many people like yourself who are out there making a difference in the world. So full disclosure, Steve and I have worked together in the past. We worked together at the airline. We worked together uh, as board members of a 501c3, and I'll let Steve tell you about that later. But is there anybody in your life uh, that you can point to, just that pivotal moment, somebody that inspired you to want to fly, someone who mentored you and really took an interest in you? There's really not one single person, but it's really a group of individuals, a group from my family, you know, my uncles who were Vietnam veterans who were in the Air Force and would, would always come over to our house and play with airplanes. And so it started there. But I got to say, it's my parents and my father who went up with me in the backseat of an airplane at 13 years old. But he created that opportunity for me, a lifelong opportunity. And uh, I would have to say it was my parents. That's amazing. It's uh, it's 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 a great thing think, when your parents can. Yeah, I mean, think of this. I'm 13 years old. I, I I haven't even driven a car, and my my parents go and take me out to the local airport, get me a flying lesson, and my dad sits in the back while his 13 year old son and the instructor up front is flying the airplane. I mean, <laughs> it's just incredible, and it's just such a warm memory. And like you said, it, I had the opportunity to have a very distinguished career and also working with you over at that airline and, well, and all the great things that you've done. So yeah, that's, I guess I would answer it that way. Mike. Well, would you like to tell us a little bit about that career? Oh, well, <laughs> well I, like I said, I started flying when I was 13 uh, and uh, did an internship my senior year at uh, college. And I started with an airline called People Express Airlines, a very innovative airline and their whole management philosophy. I mean, they're that was a, they used that the, the business model as a case study at Harvard for several years. Um, and then from there, we merged in with Texas Air and then Continental Airlines as part of Texas Air, the conglomerate of all those airlines. And then uh, what, about a decade ago, merged in with United Airlines. And myself, I, uh, I uh, was a captain, flew a lot of different airplanes and uh, throughout my career. And eventually also uh, very passionate about safety. So I was a safety chair for the association. I also worked in the safety department with the airline and then uh, migrated over uh, with that knowledge base over to the training department where I was an instructor and line check airman, certifying other pilots and uh, also having the opportunity, full disclosure, to work with you and under you and, and, and your great leadership team. So it was an incredible career that I'm just so grateful for. 
Well, thank you. You were uh, you were a great leader there, and that's that's why you were recognized and brought into the department. Uh, Steve, you've crossed the Atlantic many times. You've crossed the North Pole many times. You've been across the Pacific. Uh, you've been on every continent, I think, except <laughs> Antarctica. True, it's one of my goals to go uh, there. <laughs> and uh, like me, myself, the same. Yeah. That's my goal. But um, what did you? What did you learn? What was your takeaway from all the people you met around the world? It's a great question, Mike. Um, I would have to say communication. You know, you have to have effective communication as a leader because in order to collaborate with your team, it's all about communication. So right. I, I would have to say that in, in, in any, any position, any job, especially high, uh, high reliability organizations like the airline. Mm -hmm. So you like healthcare communications, Kate. Okay, let's pivot a little bit, not completely away from an airline career, sure. but uh, you are known throughout the industry, and I mean throughout the entire industry, as a person with a caring and a giving heart. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work with the 501c3 of uh, a very large 501c3, and then we'll maybe talk about some of the, uh, really the challenges that we had uh, that you had while you were working there. Sure, sure. Uh, well, you know, the airline that we were with, um, uh, there was an organization that was created, uh, like you said, the nonprofit that was created to help fellow employees, 100,000 fellow employees, and called the United We Care Employee Relief Fund, a multi-million dollar fund. And uh, so I, uh, I was asked to be on the board and I, uh, I eventually became the vice chairman, was the chair of the marketing and fundraising committee, was in charge of several global campaigns. And uh, during my tenure, during our tenure, you know, the organization went from just under a million to a $7 million organization, helping employees all over the planet, all over the globe, and uh, really making a difference. And, and that's exactly why I wanted to be involved because I wanted to make a difference in helping others. And, and what a great opportunity that was. And you know, we, we did a lot of great things, not just here in the US, but all over, all over the world. Speaking of the US and the challenges, there was uh, all a little storm uh, that happened to be uh, actually a very large storm uh, in Houston. And we went from pretty much fully funded to all of a sudden having a huge need for funding fast and uh, to help people who were at the, uh, uh, the worst point in their lives. You want to talk a little bit about some of the unique uh, solutions you came up with? You, you, yes, I worked on that, but you amazed me with some of the things you come up to, uh, to raise that, uh, the you. funds we needed to help those employees. Well, thanks, Mike. And, and when I say employees, I'm really talking about our family members. We, That's exactly, we felt like a family. That was exactly it. I mean, this was about helping our own, helping our family at the airline and uh, gosh, what a great opportunity it was to do that. And, and you, know, you talk about the hurricanes that hit not only here in Texas, but in Puerto Rico Yes, within like, what was it, a two week period. Um, but it was the ability to pivot, the ability to communicate. And what I loved about our board and the culture that we created was to have an active board, you know, not just showing up, but being active and uh, I remember flying down to Houston. I, I, you know, I, I flew the Boeing 777, was captain on that for, for a decade. And we did a few days right after a relief mission. And we weren't even certified yet to bring passengers back. We were going, like you just said, to take care of our family. I mean, we were bringing in hundreds of thousands of pounds of cargo and, and humanitarian aid. But um, what really struck me was I was in the jetway and just seeing all these fellow employees getting on board and I spoke with this one family, family of four, and the dad was just, you know, thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing, like, of course. And he shared a photo with me and he gave me permission to share his story back then. He literally was on the rooftop of his home with his, with his, his grandson, his children, his wife, and on, on the phone, on the radio, directing people who are on boats through his local neighborhood. And he was just so thankful for what we were able to do as you know fellow employees, and it's, that, it's really that inspiration. I, I know it inspires you, it inspires me, because when it becomes real like that, 
it's just, it's so moving and I really enjoy doing that. And, and United We Care Employee Relief Fund did exactly that on, on so many levels. You know, it, it was truly humanitarian. And, uh, you know, I was just an honor to have served for four years and to learn so much. And, uh, and, and to have you on the, you were on the board as well, Mike, and, and you did some great things with some of our global campaigns. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I really enjoyed my time there. I learned a lot. Well, thank you, and so did I, and I learned it mostly from you. Uh, I always like to give credit uh, when I talk about this funding to uh, a mentor of mine, actually. He's uh, local here in the Dallas area. His name's Randall Reed. He owns Randall Reed Ford, several dealerships. Uh, I approached him and asked him if he had room in each of his uh, the cars that he sold in Houston at his dealerships there. Uh, for a certain amount of money. And uh, he told me, he said, no, he said, I, I don't have room for that. But I do have room for double that. I remember and, that. And the, uh, <laughs> that would just blew me away. And yeah. the, the generosity that uh, everybody in the community showed was really incredible there. You know, we had an, a fellow board member at the United We Care Employee Relief Fund, uh, military background, you know, F-16 strike commander, on and on, does pro prolific philanthropic work, which is why he was on the board. And uh, they had used uh, his home down in the Keys. His, the eye of the storm went right over his home, but heavily involved. And, and uh, FEMA, they were headquartered in his house because it's the only house that withstood, withstood the storm. But two weeks later, he's calling me on the phone, and you know, all the work that we've done, and asking, hey, Steve, we've got some boots on the ground on the western portion of Puerto Rico. My background, I'm, I, I am Puerto Rican. My father was born and raised there. And I was like, absolutely, you know, called in other friends. And before you know it, with these non-government uh, organizations, they're flying helicopters with food up to the mountaintops where people have been isolated, you know, for days, bringing in formula, food, water. And so to, your, to the point, to your question, it's those individual efforts and coordinating those individual efforts, like fundraising here in Texas with your buddy, you know, coordinating with Bob and his connections. It's all about interconnectivity and, and, and leveraging those connections, you know, and, 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 and making it happen. And so, uh, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a very stressful time, but, uh, but it was a wonderful time to be able to help so many. Yes. And uh, from there, you weren't finished with the hurricanes. Uh, we had um, some of our employees, family members uh, down south of the border, out in the very uh, southern end of the Caribbean, who uh, had some challenges. And uh, we came up with some unique solutions. You came up with some unique solutions to their challenges. And uh, maybe you'd like to address that. I think you know what I'm talking about. Sure, sure. Well, at the time, you know, this, you know, we had obviously nonprofit and you have a constitution and bylaws and, and you know if you're doing things the right way you follow those constitution and bylaws and sometimes there's emergency board meetings and we had one of those a country in south uh, south america was and our fellow employees our family members were impacted impacted just like the hurricanes except it was a political crisis no food you know mm -hmm. no water and all the essentials that you need and we put together a team and we were able to to fly humanitarian aid to that country and really make an impact on those fellow employees. And we did that on a pretty sustainable basis with funding from the nonprofit. You were part of that decision. Uh, we all were as a board and I'm very, very proud that we we're able to do that because there was some pretty crazy stuff going on. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Oh, you're welcome. And um, so you would think someone with uh, such accomplishments in his career would be finished. Surely you must be finished. Surely you're ready to uh, like buy a boat, uh, take up uh, knitting, something like that. <laughs> knitting, yeah. For me, yeah. <laughs> but somehow I don't think you are. Do you, you have anything on the horizon you'd like to tell us about? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm extremely passionate about helping others. And, and so we're in the process right now of putting together a team that will eventually be called uh, uh, the, the Brain Wellness Foundation, another nonprofit. And the mission will be to help those who are impacted by uh, mental health disorders or what I like to describe as brain wellness disorders. And we'll do that by helping those impacted by brain wellness disorders and traumatic brain injuries. And we'll do that through uh, 
advocacy, education, uh, giving out grants and scholarships uh, in, in the future. But I, I think it's going to be on the same level that we experience at the United We Care Employee Relief Fund. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that team evolve and eventually start uh, making a difference in the world for those those who really need it and advocating for those individuals. I'm getting the feeling that I just heard the formulations of a mission statement coming. You know, I, I had mentioned that I retired uh, four, 14 months ago. And, uh, but I've always been involved in helping others, whether it's through uh, United We Care. And uh, so got a phone call. Actually, one of our, our board members, fellow board members, hey, Steve, can you help me? And, 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 and you know, through our connections, it's all about connectivity and the individuals and like-minded individuals. And sure enough, uh, uh, they needed some, they had a, a PPE, like several million units of PPE. So During the pandemic? Yes, during, during the COVID pandemic, uh, actually earlier in this year, uh, the beginning of the year. And so I put this group that wanted to make a significant donations in the millions of dollars of PPE and put them in contact with the Cleveland Clinic uh, Philanthropic uh, Division. And uh, they were able to take on uh, these units and make a, an infusion into the underserved communities of Cleveland. You know, food banks, homeless shelters, clinics, hospitals, anywhere in the underserved communities. And it was an infusion of like $5 million into the community. But uh, more importantly, it was helping those who really needed help. And so I was very proud to bring people together just by making phone calls and, and just making that happen. And, and that's led to some other things in, in my life. I, I think that I'll always want to help others. And uh, I, I'm currently trying to help and put together a team of like-minded individuals to help those who are impacted by uh, mental health disorders, or, or rather I would say um, uh, uh, mental uh, wellness uh, you know, brain wellness disorders. And uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And uh, just doing that, retired at home and making some phone calls and talking to individuals and like yourself, who are gonna be able to make an impact uh, in a major way in brain wellness. And in fact, there's an organization that uh, it's not formed yet. It's an, another nonprofit uh, called the Brain Wellness Foundation that's going to have a major impact on helping those who are impacted by mental health disorders or like I said, like I, well, I like to say mental uh, or brain wellness disorders and those who are impacted by uh, brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries. And uh, yeah, I, my journey took me on that path. And number one, I like to help others and make a difference in the world and pay it forward, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, and my daughter earlier in this year uh, was impacted in a major way with a traumatic brain injury and it just changed the whole direction of my life and before it was oh what could I do to, you know other things like and then it just became laser focused on helping to put together teams to help those individuals who are impacted by brain disorders and, and brain injuries mm -hmm. Steve um I got to ask you this. Uh, you do have a caring and a kind heart, and I know you, and I've known you for a long time, and you have been just immersed in this type of work. Was there a person who started you along that journey? Somebody that you admired, somebody you looked up to to uh, to start you giving you? You talked about your father for flying. Sure. Is there someone who who was a similar role for? I ha I have to say that it's just been family because you, know, you come from a loving family. My parents were, were loving and caring and sharing. And my mother's father, who was a businessman, uh, almost giving to a fault. <laughs> and maybe it's genetic, um, but it's that family and everyone who's a role model in the family uh, at whatever level. And so that's what I would say brought me to who I am today is my family. And, uh, and, I, and I share that passion and I try to pay it forward, just like with my children. My, my daughter, I have two older daughters, uh, one in graduate school and, and another daughter, the one who was impacted by the brain injury. And uh, they too have chosen lives of giving back. One 
in this in, in the field in the science of psychology and my other daughter in the art of, of comedy and those, both in, 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 uh, on a journey of giving back and making people happy in, in, in both areas. It's what it's all about. It's all about wellness, right? Exactly. Well, as we start to wrap uh, the show up for the day, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to bring up, anything else you'd like to talk about, this is your opportunity to uh, take as much time as you want and you can look right into that camera and uh, tell us anything you'd like to uh, like to talk about. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was kind of alluding towards what's going on in, in, in our country and the world with, with um, mental health disorders, brain wellness disorders, and there's some cutting edge technologies out there, and I, I, I that I never knew about, and and that my passion is to is share share that information with others, others who may not know, may not have the resources, and our country, the world, with the technologies that are out there right now. I mean, with the type of diagnostic tools that are out there, with the type of therapies that are cutting edge. You know, too many times in our country, people are diagnosed as bipolar and given a, a you know, oh, this is the, take this six medicines and there you go. And oh, you're not feel you're feeling uh, more depressed this week, take more of this one. You have a lot of anxiety, take less of that one and more of this. And it's a cocktail that really isn't sustainable for some individuals because it could be a chemical imbalance and it could also be a physical imbalance. And that's something that we discovered after you know, our, our daughter, and she, she gave full permission to talk about her journey. And I think it should be shared. Uh, she had a medical re uh, a medication reaction, went into a seizure for nine and a half hours, um, a status epilepticus event, a refractory status epilepticus event. She was uh, in ICU for, for three days, uh, excuse me, for a week, and had a 10% chance of survival. She had a great medical team that communicated exactly what they needed to do to save her life. And, uh, but she was a very, very ill and recovered miraculously. And she was in hospital for, for two months. And by the way, she's doing incredible right now. But we in this country need to change the mindset. We need to change the legislation. We need to get together all on the same page and talk about creating legislation that where insurance companies will pay for the diagnostic tools. Like for instance, CAT scans are all over the world. But what about having a CAT scan that uses the software that's called a, utilizing a normalized database so that then they could look at not just a snapshot of the brain, an MRI, a CAT scan, but are actually looking at active blood flow. And in the case of our daughter, they were able, after she re, you know, recovered from two months in the hospital and was ready to go in for this diagnostic tool, which will be cutting edge in the United States in the next five to 10 years, if not the world, they're actually able to look at her brain. And we saw it, we sat with the neurologist, one of the leading neurologists in the country, and they said, Look, there, there's no evidence of bipolar. She was diagnosed at 18. They don't diagnose bipolarism in, in adolescence. And they said, there's no ring of fire, a reduction of blood flow in that region of the brain. But what she does have is a reduction of blood flow in other areas from the injuries that she sustained as an adolescent, you know, soccer, concussion, getting hit, playing around. And, 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 and she was told, and we were told, she actually has an 80 to 90% probability of a 100% recovery. As a parent to hear that after you're thinking your child for the rest of their lives has, you have to manage this mental health disorder, which is really a brain wellness disorder. In her case, it was physical. And there are therapies out there that can increase blood flow to those regions. I'm not taking anything away from those who have a chemical imbalance, but by utilizing the scan, then the whole team of doctors, the whole healthcare team can look at and say, no, this, per this person has a chemical imbalance and they can effectively manage that patient. But if you don't have a chemical imbalance and it was because of a physical injury, well, then you could do something like hyperbolic chambers. It costs a lot of money. Let's change that. But uh, you can also do 
another therapy which our daughter is currently doing called photobiomodulation, infrared light, that you utilize over several months. It's been a, it's it's FDA approved. Uh, they've utilized the, this therapy a, a, on an evidence-based study with Iraqi war veterans, with the, the doctor I was I was mentioning, uh, and another doctor from Harvard University, and it's ch it changed the lives of those veterans who came back. They had they came from a normalized database, and uh, and they they had improvised explode were parties to improvise explosive devices out in the field of war, came back bipolar, came back having severe anxiety, severe depression, wanting to you know, hurt themselves. And uh, through the study and through photobiomodulation, they changed their lives to where they were off the medicines or dramatically reduced the amount of medicines. It's an epidemic out there, but there are there are resources that are going to be cutting edge, and it's it's my mission to spread the word. It's my mission for those who may not have have have, have the resources like we did in our family. Our daughter's going to make a full recovery. It's amazing, and especially since she uh, started the photobiomodulation, I see changes every day in executive function. She's a comedian. She's done commercials on on, on you know on, on TV. She's she's a brilliant. You know, both my daughters are brilliant. But now as a parent, I see the opportunities that we knew she had that I thought she had, and we all as a family had lost. And she has a bright future in front of her. And why can't we do that for others in this country and in the world? We need to get the word out there. And uh, that's my mission. That's what I want to do. And with people like you with and, and surrounding myself, with like-minded individuals. I truly believe we're gonna be able to do that. And, and just coming here and spreading the word, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to do that. It's very personal, but uh, together all of us can, can, can change the world and, and create uh, brain wellness for everyone. And uh, so thank you so much, I really appreciate it. My Steve, time. you're very welcome. It's my pleasure to uh, give you the opportunity to do that. And um, I'd like to thank you for coming and being on the show. And I would like to thank you for watching the show. Uh, if anyone has an interest in photobiomodulation, or it's commonly called LED light therapy or low level light therapy, it goes by several different names. Uh, you can contact me at thegrowthfacilitator.com. That's my company uh, where I work with uh, leaders, leadership, building teams, uh, doing coaching, mentoring, interview counseling, things like that. But uh, you can contact with me there and I will put you in touch with the owner of uh, the light therapy company. Uh, so if you have a problem and you need some help, call me. And if you'd like to work with me about some of the other uh, things in leadership, maybe you feel like uh, you don't have enough time at work, you have the stresses related to the pandemic, you feel like you're neglecting your family, you feel like your team at work feels like you're neglecting them. Uh, contact me, thegrowthfacilitator.com. You can email me directly at mike at thegrowthfacilitator.com. So thanks again for watching and uh, the show is Cornerstone and we'll talk to you the next time. I wanna thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed the show and found something of value to help with the challenges you face as a leader. Please feel free to share this show with your friends on social media and don't forget to visit my website, thegrowthfacilitator.com. And while you're there, book a free call with me. We'll see you next time on Cornerstone.